<laughs> All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our service this evening. Um, we've got several folks down helping tonight, uh, filling up candy bags. They've got enough. Don't anybody jump up and say, I'll go down and help. Uh, but uh, for um, trunk or treat night at the uh, Willard South Elementary uh, intermediate school up here, so they're going to fill up bags so they can set up a trunk or treat, take our band up, and they're decorating it and things to be a witness and things to people that are there, um, and just make our presence known here in this community to our church family and stuff. So thank you all for the donations for the candy, by the way, and if any of it's late, uh, I'll put it in my office and keep it for next year or, or if it if it lasts that long you know all the extra stuff you know no I'm teasing you but I will take it in my office I won't keep it next year I'll give it we'll put it in the welcome cups that we get you know we put candy and stuff in there but anyway we have several folks that are down there in the fellowship hall preparing candy bags to give out for Friday night for trunk or treat and um, so we really appreciate each of you that are here tonight, um, Deborah's home, not feeling well, came in from work, and Miss Lauren, I think she's got, thinks she's got strep, so um, we, we'll, you, you've got me and Miss Suzanne tonight, you know, to uh, lead us in a couple songs here in just a moment, and uh, then I'll share with you in our Bible study time. Um, Brother Dan, it's good to see you tonight, buddy, and I know that... Pat's singing up in heaven. She's not in that wheelchair any longer. And we thank the Lord. She went to be with the Lord. And the funeral service uh, for Pat, uh, uh, Dan's family, and things is uh, this coming Friday. Visitation at 9 o'clock at White's Chapel out here by the airport. And, um, um, and then the service starts from 10 to 11. So keep them in your prayers, please. We'll pray for them tonight. And um, uh, the church is providing a, a lunch for Brother Dan and his family and things here. June, thank you so much for getting that organized with our committee. We like to do that. I thank folks for their donations and food to be a ministry to the family and stuff. So thank you for that. I um, also want to pray for... Uh, Jay's sister-in-law, Rose, she had surgery this morning, and we want to keep her in prayer. She's at Cox Hospital, so just, uh, she has cancer. You know, we've been praying for her with cancer and had a double mastectomy, so uh, we want to pray for her. They had to take out uh, all the lymph nodes on one side uh, of her body and things, and we're just praying for God's touch in her life, uh, uh, I really appreciate talking to her this morning, having prayer with the family in there and stuff uh, by way of phone. And uh, you could just feel the presence of the Lord, you know, in, over the phone line. And we thank God for that. Um, but anyway, we'll um, uh, pray for uh, her and the family. This coming Sunday, we're going to recognize Sister Evelyn. Uh, Evelyn will be 107 uh, on uh, Halloween Day, the 31st. So we're going to recognize her eight days early because her family's coming in on the 30th or on that weekend, and they're going to be throwing parties for this 107-year-old lady. They're flying in from everywhere, and uh, they don't think they'll be able to make it to church. They'll be celebrating so much on that Sunday morning, which I was wanting to try to have something for. And uh, so we're just going to... Rita just said, get her, you know, just don't get her, just, just sing happy birthday to her. So we're going to have her come up at the beginning, Greg, of our service Sunday morning so that uh, folks can, you know, see her and, and things. And she'll walk up here. She's 107 years old, man. I mean, her and Rita, it's just, it'll blow people's minds away. So we're excited about that. And uh, we'll recognize her Sunday morning at the beginning of the service. So you all be in prayer for Sister Evelyn and, and different ones. Um, Ray, we want to pray for Brother Ray McNabb at uh, Springfield Villa. And who else do we have? 
Yes, continue praying for Sister Janice Johnson. Lift her up to the Lord. Brother Jim Hobart, he's doing pretty good. Brother Jim's going on hospice. Uh, I went to see him yesterday and keep him in your prayers. He's doing, doing good. Doing, he's facing everything good. and He's at stage four cancer. And so I'm assuming he stopped taking the treatments. <clears throat> you, you, um, I don't think you can be on hospice if, you're, if you continue to try and take treatments and things. Um, so we want to pray for him. Continue praying for Ken. He's still doing the immunotherapy. Looks like he's suntanned and doing, still doing good. Ken, we'll keep praying for you. Um, any others? Linnell. Yes, Linnell came home. Thank you. Linnell was in the hospital and uh, came home. She told me I couldn't believe it. She said she is 93 years old. And uh, a sweet, sweet lady. Most of you don't know her. She was here when I first came and then the COVID hit. And several of our older folks just stopped coming church when COVID hit after that. That they just, you know, was afraid to get back out to do it. So Sister Linnell, continue to lift her up to the Lord in prayer. Anyone else? If not, then I'll lead us in prayer. And then I'll ask Brother Odell to come lead us in a song. And then after that, we'll have to come back. All right, let's pray. Thank you, dear Father, for your blessings, and you heard the request uh, that we've spoken with our lips. You know what's in our hearts, and the unspoken request. Lord, we pray that you'll be with each and every need. Give comfort and healing according to your will, and may you, we be drawn into your presence tonight as we share together in this time of worshiping you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to stand, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. First and last verse, we'll sing it be on the screen. <clears throat> tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. It's a Savior, y'all doing good. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And isn't that a big amen? I'll let you sit on this and we'll see leaning on the everlasting arms here together. <clears throat> All righty. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarms leaning 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 on the everlasting arms Oh, how sweet to walk 
in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. In Jesus. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning. On the everlasting arms. Hey, good singing. Boy, I tell you, about got me out of breath, but it was good singing. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Well, you know what time it is. Fireside chat. Okay. I don't have any questions starting out tonight, so does someone have a question Raise your hand. We'll get right in front of you, Carol. Carol was heading back there. Hold that hand up there, Miss Dixie. Carol, you should have known. You're sitting right behind her. Okay, this is a question from my sister Wanda. She was wondering about the serpent and Adam and Eve. And were there serpents before Satan tempted Eve with the apple? And were there snakes before that? And they were just good snakes. They weren't mean, evil like Satan. <laughs> or, <laughs> anyway, for the serpent. What, what about that? Congratulations to Miss Wanda. I don't think that I've ever had that question asked. Uh, I don't recall or have anyone that um, had mentioned that. Uh, to answer part of the question, um, were there serpents... Before, like you're saying, the serpent, you know, we <clears throat> talked about uh, like snakes, you know, good snakes, you see. Um, everything was good until the fall of man. Um, and uh, the answer would be yes, uh, as far as reptiles crawling from their belly, whatever snakes. The, and the Bible mentions, you know, throughout the things of serpents or whatever, vipers and things that you'll find. <clears throat> For example, Paul was shipwrecked and he got bit by a poisonous viper in the New Testament. Um, uh, it's referred to uh, in Scripture where that, of course, in Genesis afterwards, the, that, the, uh, that Jesus, I think it may be Genesis 3, 15 or 16, um, where after God uh, uh, places, you know, for the curse of death comes upon man and cast out of the garden, and it would be difficult for woman in childbirth, man to labor upon the fields by the sweat of the brow, and uh, but that the child from the woman would crush the serpent's head. And if you ever saw the Passion of Christ, you see that in the garden um, when... Uh, Jesus is praying, and that was a very in, impactful moment in that movie of the Passion of Christ that Mel Gibson did, very, very biblical oriented to that. Uh, one of the best productions, I think, personally, uh, that I have seen. In the reference to, of how, uh, and maybe this is the disguised Dixie, Say for Miss Wanda, I don't know if she's watching live stream tonight, or thank those of you who are watching live stream. Um, 
uh, we dis did discuss about the serpent and, and what he may have looked like and whether it could have been a winged creature, you know, that because at this point, uh, God's uh, curse in Genesis, uh, part of that is the fact that he would be no longer able to fly or whatever, but was cast to the ground or whatever, you know, that would on his belly uh, for the serpent. Uh, some could have thought, we, we've talked about dragons uh, being in the Bible and uh, things, you know, when we've looked up certain things to do that and saying whether that serpent looking like kind of being that way. But whatever for Eve, when she saw and heard the voice and understood, it was, the amazing part was that he could communicate with the woman with Eve, and uh, the serpent communicated, caused her to question and to doubt, and we know, of course, the, the, the serpent was possessed by Lucifer, Satan, to, to be a part of, of what was happening to this being, this serpent. No surprise, because uh, uh, fallen angels or whatever trans can transform themselves into, like, angels of light. They can appear for different things. We know they possess animals. We saw that in the New Testament with pigs and uh, we, we know they possess men, women, and children. Uh, so uh, this is the demons, the fallen angels, whatever, can do those things for a matter of control or separating from us from God, keeping us from being saved keeping us from believing God. That was the things that make us doubt God, thinking that God lied, you know. Uh, he, he didn't mean surely he won't do that, you know, putting doubt in our hearts. So um, there, there were serpents before, and the serpent there that is spoken, of course, we know is this, the grand master in the sense of serpents as he appears there at the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil and just simply waiting and until that, we call it an apple tree. I don't know, but it was a fruit, a tree that was beautiful. And so we think any kind of fruit we're looking at to say that it was an apple. And for, the, for that perspective, we'll call it an apple tree. And uh, she saw that it was good and then tasted it and things. So he got her to give and then she, this is how sin transpires, what happens and then serpent got her to taste of the fruit and then she got Adam to taste of it to to be complicit to her sin and uh, so then they both of course hid from God when God came now Dixie did I answer your question if you want to read that again and let me make sure what is it so God made oh you scared me go ahead honey <laughs> Uh, well, God made all the animals. Yes. So there were at least two snakes, serpents, you know, that he created. Well, that would have been on the ark of, no, uh, of uh, Noah for two to go. But to say, yes, there would have been a male and a female snake for snake. them to be able so, to multiply because everything was to multiply. Yeah, that's true. So this serpent was actually, was, was it perhaps a special one that Satan possessed? Or well, there's there could have been many serpents that well, looked like been, this yeah, serpent. Could have been. She was just wondering, you know, and I was just. Oh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't. <laughs> we surmising. don't know. It's hypothetical. We're just surmising at this yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, but what we what we do know is that this serpent, Satan, spoke through this serpent. Lucifer spoke through this serpent to tempt Eve. Uh, that he was. He was the one. And God referred to it as the serpent. And, and the devil is, is referred to in that way, you know, when you think of um, the serpent. So, yeah, that, there could have been. But, but to say, or let's say whether, if, who knows, because if he can transform himself into whether he possessed a serpent to come, become that or transformed himself to look like that. You, you know what I mean? So we don't know. It's hypothetical. 
but we do know that God uh, placed a curse upon uh, because of his temptation to uh, Eve in the garden and to Adam. And all, everything was cursed after that. All of creation, animals, um, the earth itself, and growing things, everything. The earth itself will be destroyed in the latter days when you read in Second Peter and in Revelation. So even the earth of this gal and and our I'll even go a little further and say even our galaxy of all the stars and the plants and things in the last days when when we have this fire come the heavens will dissolve, it says, and they're coming upon the earth. Is this is the fire and brimstone that's come upon the earth that will destroy the earth. I find it fascinating that it wasn't too long ago, a couple of months ago or so, that, that our scientists, NASA, fired a, a, a missile out into outer space to, to, and targeted an asteroid out in outer space uh, just in preparation because we've had several asteroids or different things coming close into atmospheric uh, areas to where we thought that might hit the earth, you know. And some have said, scientists have said, that's how the Grand Canyon was formed years, thousands of years ago, whatever, is these things hitting the earth to make these di big uh, areas of caved in and stuff upon the planet. So if that happened then, and of course we know in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was fire and brimstone that was coming down upon Sodom and Gomorrah upon the earth. So if that happened then, we know that it could happen again, that, you know, it's... Uh, God can do whatever, and he, but he's already told us that it's going to happen in the Bible. And so the premise is that whether we believe that. So everything was cursed by that simple. And, of course, Lucifer and the fallen, his followers, angels, one-third of heaven was cast down upon the earth. And so that showed he was here during that time. Now, whether at the time... This is a good question. Whether at the time of, because in Job, the book of Job, by the way, some, some of my professors over the years in Old Testament uh, believe that Job was one of the oldest books, if not the oldest book written in the Old Testament. And I find, we find that amusing, you know, to think that Job in his time of whatever, but Satan at that time was going back and forth from earth to heaven, accusing man. So, but then there's a time when he's no longer the accuser, and at that time he had the power of death. In the book of Job. Because God told him he could do everything to Job except do what? You can't take his life. So at that time to say that Satan was power, Lucifer um, and many of Job's family members, you know, he uses people to kill and destroy so just throwing that out there in a connection, let's say if we're doing an outline here to build it, that Lucifer, so when this time in Genesis, which is kind of going back and recounting history as to the creation, we look at the Bible as a chronological form, and sometimes you get lost when you start looking and going from, and we're saying, you know, the beginning of the Bible is Genesis, the end of it is Revelation, but in that time frame, sometimes when you're looking, you, you have to place things of occurrences because they're giving us a history, and sometimes it's repetitive of how they or what they say uh, in, in history as we understand. But, of course, nothing precedes the fact that in the beginning, God, you know, in uh, Genesis 1-1. So I just found that interesting to think. So was, was the serpent... 
if, at this time, going to and fro accusing man, as he was with Job, or when that began, when they were actually cast out, because Jesus said he saw, he was there when Lucifer, you know, and the angels were kicked out of heaven. That, you know, he, he was there on the throne. He saw he was part of that you know, thing when they were cast down upon the earth. And by the way, I'm pre- as in my sermon this week, preaching about uh, no hell, no heaven, no God, etc. Um, hell is not created. Hell is created, but it's not created for us, not for any man, not for any uh, human being. It was created for the fallen angels, for the demons, for Lucifer. And that's where that place... So then, that's his domain. But... He goes to and fro from hell to earth. Lucifer's not bound. He's not bound in hell. Yeah, you were saying, and I'll tell people that's listening, he's not in hell now. No, he's not in hell now. Lucifer, that's his domain, his dominion, his kingdom, and he's trying to take over the earth of doing that. So he's, that's what he's doing is gathering his army, you know. And followers and doing things. So it's a very good question. Thank you for uh, asking that about the serpent. I hate snakes. <laughs> I can't, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Rats and snakes would be my, <laughs> that'd be about it. And then we could throw a few spiders out there, I guess. But anyway. Thank you. You got questions, follow up on that, or comments? Right here, Carol. Hold on just a second. I had read something recently, and I wanted to know your take on it. Um, I had read that all of the apostles were killed because of their faith, except for Judas, who committed suicide, or so that's what this was saying, and John. Is that a true statement? <clears throat> it, it is. It is a true statement. However, John, uh, not for sure of John's death on the, on the you know, he died of old, he was a, of old age, the last one. He was exiled on the Isle of Patmos. He was in prison and put on a, an island, you know, for, and was there and, you know, he did a lot of writing. The Lord, he envisioned the Lord. He drew near to the Lord. It was John the Beloved. He's the uh, writer of the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Revelation. And uh, so he was the last of the twelve, but you are correct. Judas uh, didn't die. He died for the lack of his faith. You know, he didn't die for his faith. He died for the lack of his faith. He committed suicide. Uh, He was ashamed of his betrayal of what, what happened once it took place. And there was no going, you know, even though he went, who's to say? But you remember what happened to him. It says Satan entered into him. Uh, And, you know, only Jesus can cast Satan out of someone. You can try to clean your life up, make it better, and and the devil get, but the, uh, the devil has run of your life or my life if if we're unsaved if our house is empty if our soul is empty he can come and go within our lives once he has control of us sometimes this although we struggle maybe you want to go to church you start praying start trying to live right and then all once you break back into drinking and doing this or that and you know the devil just continues to leave it's not to say that believers uh, can't be tempted themselves as if you're truly saved. But you have the help and grace of God because when you're saved, God's on the inside through the Holy Spirit. But if you're lost, then, you know, you, you, you either belong to the devil or you belong to God. You do have a choice. You have that choice to make. And once you've sold yourself to the devil or... You, God purchased us with the price of the blood of the Lord Jesus. 
so that's that's a thing that we have to deal with. But statement is correct. They died for their faith and what they their faith they're believing. Some beheaded, some cast in the lion's den, some crucified. Peter, as I mentioned the other night, or something was crucified upside down. He felt ashamed to be crucified the same way that Jesus was. And he requested to be crucified upside down. Uh, one of them being put in burning oil. I'm sorry? Uh, this article talked about one of them, I couldn't remember which one it was, that was put in burning oil. Mm -hmm. And one of them cast down the well. And it just gave descriptions and stuff. And I just, yeah, just super gruesome. One of them was skinned alive. And I was just, boy, how, how much faith do you have to not, you know, say, hey, don't do this to me. It's okay. I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll not follow the Lord anymore, you know, to have something that horrific happen to you. Just it tests to, you to what you really believe, Betsy. Right. If you really, when we say we believe and we trust the Lord, those, I think those days are ahead of us in that persecution. You know, I preached on Persecution Sunday for the last of Beatitudes. And uh, how, how easily do we give in to uh, the things of the world when we stop living our Christian faith, our witness? You know, they did this. They were martyrs. The word... Um, Acts 1.8 Jesus told these disciples the, the ones we're talking about these apostles when he has come upon you he was telling about the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit has come upon you you shall be witnesses unto me and he said Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria the most part of the world but the word witness you shall be he said when he has come upon you you shall receive power to be witnesses unto me the word witness, interestingly, in the Greek is martus. Same word is martyr. So when we become a witness for Jesus, just think about that. When we're empowered as Christians is that, you know, we, he gives us that power to endure martyrdom, to be a martyr, to die. We're going to die for him as a witness. Yes, I will not deny Jesus, you know. Will be his witnesses. And that's the not not a you know. And unfortunately, there's good witnesses and bad witnesses. And some run like Judas sold out. And that tells you where the real cream of the crop is, don't it? When you see that come. Thank you, honey, for the question. Follow up question, uh, comment, another question. Raise your hand. Hey, we all takers now. There's no, there's nothing offline here, or well, um, no boundaries, no whatever's on your heart. Question something you've been wanting to know. Just raise your hand, and we'll cover it. We'll get to it. Up front, Carol. I'm glad you do that, Dixie, because you, you're giving Carol exercise. She's getting you're comfortable getting back there. <laughs> Uh, it's not really so much of a question, but it's an observation of how this world is going. Uh, the evil that is just absolutely exploding around the world and in our own nation. And, the, and I've read this and I've heard this, that America is not in the end times. Or America is not part of the very end times. That is correct. Thing. It'll um, be destroyed or, or, or something. It will be, it will be taken over. That by is something. Correct. Yeah. I've heard there will that. not be a United States of America. So you know what? Right now there is a United States of America, so we know it's not today. So but there won't be a United States of America. Okay, but open your eyes and your ears and look and see what's happening to the United States of America. Is that we are digressing from the republic to which we are. We're digressing from uh, the capitalism and things to do in that to getting more towards, leaning more towards uh, socialism, uh, communism, uh, more of a, where the government does, where, which is going to take away ownership of properties and things. 
And we've gone through the times in the past couple of years to where we've seen statues tore down. They're destroying the history of America. We're no longer studying about uh, our founding fathers and how America was established and, and the different things and destroying the history of America. And when you, as you're destroying this history to, for generations to come, it's only a matter of time to, to which it's easily to say, let's change the name because this is so offensive. When people think about uh, the United States of America, so we need to, to change it to some other name rather than the United States of America. Uh, that's all it takes. That's another question. Uh, <laughs> Tony Blinken, who is our Secretary of State, yes, ma'am, was on a podium talking just a week ago, maybe, and he and I think it's the Mexican president, um, they're talking up this North American Union, where Canada, United States, and Mexico would be all one big conglomerate country. And North no American type. No, no, no borders. Of course, no, none of the globalists want borders anywhere. But Canada, United States, and Mexico, maybe even Central America, would be one big kingdom type Kingdom, thing. I guess, or country or something. And they're talking this up. And the globalists are, are really... Because they want to destroy what's left of our freedom, so this is maybe another way of doing it. But he was actually talking about that. Our Secretary of State, Blinken, just the other day, a week ago maybe. And we've heard people talking about the, the uh, World Council of Churches and NATO and, and um, the control of NATO, what it does with all these nations, and giving rights, like if we do policing rights, to come in, to think about if NATO came in and said, if we are uh, abusing or doing whatever the things, they ha we haven't been quick to move on other countries as NATO because they depend on the United States of America, just like with Ukraine and Russia right now. And some people say both are... Sometimes you've got... Uh, just like in voting, sometimes you have to vote for the lesser of two evils, you know, that we have seen over the years. You know, you do or you, you have to choose. You got, well, what's my choices here to do it? And sometimes that's the same thing just because uh, one nation uh, may be horrendous in some other way and then another nation is also being bad, whether it's Ukraine or Russia. I got called on the carpet by a witch doctor in Nigeria um, and I had preached in that area village and they made all there was all kinds of eerie sounds I mean it's dark there's no street lights out in the jungle but I remember around the campfire when the lady I think I might have told you that she came running she got saved in the, the crusade the meeting I was holding where people just out, I mean, I don't know how many people was actually there, because I only had like one lantern that was on a forked stick out into the, in the sand and things and looking, but there were hundreds. And as I preached the gospel, and a lot of people were saved by their coming, I'm saying, I didn't get to talk to each one individually, people were praying, but through an interpreter that, yes, they believed, they received Christ. And when we were leaving the village, that witch doctor's wife, uh, one of his wives, was saved in that crusade and came and she was trying to get around me because they were trying to usher me. This was in 1980 and this was when the Iran hostages and there was a lot of fear and stuff in the nation. There was, it was very testing to um, dangerous um, and uh, Muslim activity and things that was uh, anti-Christian, very much so. And uh, so our people, the, the Nigerian pastors and different ones were around me, kind of getting me to the van that we had. And I remember getting, and she would reach in, and she would kept 
crying out, blah, 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 whatever, in her language, and saying something and weeping, and as we was trying to rush and walk towards, and she was, would get my shirt and the, and, uh, the pull on the tail of my shirt to hold me, and they'd smack her off, and, and I'd say, what's she saying? And she was, and finally, I, I just stopped. I said, what is she saying? And they said, she is the witch doctor's uh, wife. Uh, well, actually, I guess it was uh, chief of the village. I'm sorry. Well, the witch doctors were sitting there, and I guess it was practice. They had voodoo practice. Um, and she was saying that she was saved. She believed in Jesus. And she wanted to be able to convert to Christianity and come to church to worship um, uh, Jesus. And would I please come and talk to her husband? And they said her husband is like the chief of this witch doctor stuff, you know, and they said, we can't do this, you know, we can't go. And I said, yes, let's do this. Let's, let's talk. I thought, man, how many chances I'm going to get to talk to a chief of a tribe and a witch doctor and all the different ones and there was like three or four sitting around fireplace things at their at their huts and things and there was just sticks piled up wood fires blowing and they were sitting there and he one of the things he said was in his the knowledge he said you christians kill people you murder you think we are we don't know, you know, that, but you, you kill, you fight wars and kill people. Do the same. Then you talk about love and you talk about this, you know, and said, and he had the knowledge of knowing that even Jesus was killed. You know, and he was blaming to say, here you are in doing this and you want, it took me a long time and I can't just go and explain, but he was asking me why, and, and I just, I had to go in, in the thing he was talking about, because they believed in what was called the juju god, that the largest, like, tree or whatever, that became a god, whatever it was, there was idol worship, and they worshiped that, or voodoo, they, they would stick pins and things, or put chicken sacrifice around different things, that was, that was their culture, you know, of what they worshiped, they believed in several different kinds of gods, but they didn't believe in Jesus, although they believed in God, in a God, and things. But in the long run, after I talked to him, and I don't remember all that I said, because it was like I said, man, that's 1980, um, and uh, he at the end said that he would allow his wife to come to the Christian church, and that he would continue to worship his way, and he said, he, and it was like that way. I'll be covered either way, you know. This this was his his expression, his feeling, you know, that he thought that if he allowed her to go ahead, and he said, we will see which one is the stronger, you know, to do this, and and his power. So, but you could understand how people look at it, say, America's hands aren't clean. You know, our hands are not clean. I've been in several foreign countries, and it's still one of the greatest nations upon the earth, if not the greatest. I'd rather live here than anywhere else uh, to do that. If I had a choice of going somewhere, I might, I might choose to go to the Philippines. I like that pretty good. Um, their pineapples enticed me. <laughs> uh, but, I, you know, it's just this is the thing, because look at us. Break it down locally. People in the community. How many times has a church given, uh, got a black eye that the people in the surrounding areas around, around a church in a community and they don't come because of what they see people who are supposed to be Christians and how they devour each other. How, how that stuff, you know, it, doing wrong stuff, saying wrong things, harmful things and stuff that they do it and they don't live Christ-like. We don't live Christ-like. And they hear it in the beauty shops, barber shops, grocery stores, post office, places. They hear them talking. They say, oh, that's so-and-so. They go over there at that church or whatever. And they hear you and me. They hear us out there. They see us. And so then you look at the churches and wonder why they're declining. So what's happening to America? 
America is on the decline from Christianity, from God. There are a very low percentage of people that really claim, and I'm preaching Sunday to be the factor of this in this message Sunday. I hope you will be able to be here about no heaven, no hell, N-O, no heaven, no hell, then no, K-N-O-W, hell, colon, or no heaven, K-N-O-W, no heaven. The choice is there's a way, and why that you live is living up to what you say, that if you believe, this is our problem, is that we say we believe, but when it comes down to that martyrism, Betsy, to be that witness, say you're going to die on the stake, you're going to lose your job, if you, don't, if, you don't, if you do this, or teach in school, you can't teach school anymore. Look how we've laid down in the schools and the hospital people who say they're Christians. Principles, the pressure that is put on the people who lay down to higher powers just because it, it's not that we're, because they're trying to change of what Christianity had brought into America because we were founded upon those truths. In God we trust. Amen? Amen. And now it's changing. And yes, there will be no America at the very final end time. I think America will play a big role, but I think, I think that America will go down fighting. And Israel will still stand. Israel will still be around. But America will go down. And if America turns away from Israel, that could be happening sooner than later. So... All right, any other question or comment? All right, hold you. Yes, honey, you just hold on. We'll get you the... Well, I kind of have a follow-up on that. So, yeah. am, I the, am I the only one in here that finds that absolutely terrifying? Because I do. I find that super terrifying. There's nothing we can do about this. This is what's coming. This is what's promised is going to happen. And we're going to have to make or break, whatever. So the only thing we can do now is try to get everybody that we love and people we don't love saved to go with us to heaven, and that's it. There's nothing else we can do. And we're going to watch this happen, right? It's frightening. And that's the thing, Betsy. But it doesn't mean we lay down and stop living, trying to live for Jesus and do the right thing. That's our responsibility because we are light and salt of the earth and as light but our light is getting dirty our globe is dim so there's that's why darkness is overcoming the light there's more darkness which represents evil into the world it's our faults that we have allowed that to happen because we have devoured within we have just simply the criticism we turned away from god and when you do that, we turn on self. We're more selfish and things. And we, we have not, uh, you know, church was a place. This would be the place to where we could come into the house of God and sanctuary to worship. And there was that bonding together that would come. But we don't. And so, therefore, now we are suffering the consequences in God's judgment. He already knew that it was going to happen. It's already written. It's right here. It's right here in the end time. It's just, it's, it's written. So we say, well, I might as well, this gets into that predestination. Somebody says, well, you know, if I'm predestined to do that, I might as well, I can't do anything to do that. No, it's like the little boy throwing the, the little, uh, I guess, starfish or whatever he found on the beach, throwing them back in. The old fellow walked by him and said, son, you can't save all of them. He said, no, but I can save this one. You know, throwing them back in. So it's, I think it's a matter of our reflection. We're supposed to. Jesus didn't save everybody when he was here. He didn't heal everybody when he was here. Uh, he called everybody to come. And there was choice to come follow him. But there were few that did. And the ones he did impacted the world for several thousands of years. We're products of that. From those witnesses, those early witnesses. That seed was sown with products.
But what are we leaving the generation, our kids, are behind us to say, because it is hard. I think our young people have a harder time today in right now because of the way so much and in, in most of what I have observed in our, some of our young people, they don't have good work ethics. Nobody, well, not even the old folks now, nobody wants to work. You know, it's like an entitlement thing. They don't want, uh, we're, what, what happened to enjoying work? Taking pleasure in doing something to work, you know, rather than just sitting around playing. And we just killed ourselves with video games and telephones and computers. We all have it. We've lost out on the sense of communication. But we've lost that sense of communication with God. And, uh, yeah, it's frightening, Betsy. Uh, mm -hmm. We have that blessed hope of the rapture eventually. Yes, we do. And he does call us all out. He does. And, 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 that's, and we, we know that. We won't go through the tribulation of seven years of that process. <clears throat> you know, of all we that. won't go through the worst part of it. I would concede that the possibility that, that we may enter into, we'll see, we'll think we're in that tribulation when the time comes. But in the major part of that, I've heard people say, because the, that tribulation is broken down into two segments, three and a half, three and a half. First three and a half appears to be more peace. You know, that plane's going to land. I hear it just gliding over to the airport. Uh, so first three and a half years is peace, you know, as it kind of starts out. And, man, everything's great. And... All at once, though, when the government said you've got the mark of the beast, there's a separation between people who are believers or Christians uh, put to death. Persecution sets in if you don't worship the beast. Uh, the Antichrist, who appears to be the Christ, the people will acclaim that the Messiah has come. Even the very elect, if possible, Jesus says, could be deceived. In those last days. So that's where you have to know your heart. And to know uh, that you're really saved. That you love the Lord. That you're willing to commit. And you say, you're say you saying, no, I would rather die than give in to uh, whatever. I am not going to give in to those senses. I'm not saying, and let me just throw this out there. I'm not saying vaccine or not vaccine. Some people tie that in as to be the mark of the beast, you know, with the vaccine or unvaccine or the mask or whatever. <coughs> no, that may be pre-staged to set how government can control. I found it awful alarming when the pandemic hit of how quickly, like a wildfire, if you set a match to this dry Ozark Mountains and the leaves, of how quick it spread over thousands of acres if something go. And that when that came... How quick, just look how quick that happened. And then you know in the twinkling of an eye of how things can just change that quick. If a nuclear blast goes off in our country and people were preparing for it stuff, if that happens, then you could see where, as you're preparing things, the impact it has on the whole world for every one of us. You think about your job, you think about your income, your bank account, and everything. If you think about all things being shut down, you have no access to it. Like a run on the bank when you had money, because those things won't matter. And we'll just be fending to try to get food and drink and shelter and protection to do that. In those days you were talking about where they become more evil. Uh, this is just the, the beginning of that, to what we see. All right, well, I hate to send you, you know, like home, you know, in such a dismay. But let me give you some hope. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. And you, because I've overcome the world, you shall overcome the world too. And you are in the world, but you are not of the world. And even though those martyrs did die when he told them that, and they were killed, and they, and they were made to look awful that this was to put fear in other people. The way that they were slaughtered 
was to put fear in other people so that they wouldn't be uh, killed or slaughtered the same way, and people ran and hid. And much of their, but you know what happened? The church grew. When the church gets under persecution, that was the growingest times of the church of Christ. And I'm not talking about the church of Christ like in denomination, okay? Yeah, I'm talking about the church of believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, under persecution. So, when hard times come, is that that's what happens is the true church begins to prosper and to grow through that because we have nowhere else to turn but in our faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming tonight. Love each of you. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday. I hope you're here uh, for the service, the sermon that uh, the Lord gave me about three weeks ago. God bless you. Good night. <laughs>